Starbucks, even though Starbucks I will trade, but again, it's not something that I go, wow, this looks so good. So tomorrow, again, trade with caution, okay? Will there be something? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, to a Thursday night edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com. Uh, nightly update show. Um, I was debating whether to record a nightly video tonight uh, only because I'm just so tired. I'm, I, I physically crashed around lunchtime or so. So <laughs> it's kind of hardly, it, it's really hard for me to kind of echo what I'm feeling, right? Uh, and at the same time, kind of get my point across, but I'm trying to fight through it. Uh, really good day today. Um, I, I think this is probably, again, uh, one of the more aggressive markets that I have traded today, uh, traded uh, in, in my career. Um, what I like about today's session was, number one, the market didn't give back any gains, okay? Even the names that had the biggest runs yesterday uh, in the queues, the, you know, the Amazons, which yesterday gave, you know, just a ridiculous move. You know, they were down, but not overwhelming. Uh, Netflix that had this crazy, crazy run. Again, put in an inside day. And you can go through all of them. Facebook put in an inside day. Uh, Microsoft, it was actually, it was even up today. I, to, I totally forgot about the, never mind. I totally forgot about the TikTok thing. We'll get to that in a second. So I, I like what the market did today. Okay, I really do. Uh, more important, what I like what the market did today, it rested. It structurally was good. And again, the theme of this week is when a lot of the beta names uh, weren't participating, or at least stuck in a range. And again, uh, it is very conceivable that, you know, maybe they have one more res day tomorrow, okay? Uh, it would actually be very, very healthy if they did in a weird way, even though, again, uh, we are trading day to day, and that's where our opinion lies. Um, from the structural point of view, I would love to see pretty much all of them just kind of rest, okay? Um, Tesla is going bananas ahead of their split, um, you know, Nuts, just an absolutely crazy stock. Uh, Microsoft is rallying. Uh, Beyond had a really awesome move today. And we were talking about the stocks that were playing catch up. Uh, we, we had them today. You know, we had those names today, those Disney's uh, that we covered yesterday. Uh, Beyond finally woke up, technically uh, confirmed behind that morning PR. Um, so it was a good, good, solid session. And, you know, if, if you are uh, a bear, for example, again, um, the frustration level must be up to here, even when they attempted to take Tesla red today. Okay. And this is, you know, just to gives you, just to show you how aggressive this market is. They actually took Tesla down to red before they jammed it back up almost a hundred points. So the frustration for a perma bear, I get it. Okay. You're fighting tech, you know, you're fighting logic, uh, you're fighting rationale. But you can fight both of those things, right? Just don't fight price action. That's the most important thing. Uh, going into tomorrow, you know, this is kind of where people, you know, this is where kind of people get, get into trouble. And we'll, we'll get to pivots in a second. There was some really, really uh, aggressive pivots today. But this is where kind of people get into trouble. And I want to kind of shoot a little piece of advice. When you have a very strong week, uh, like we've had Monday through Friday, uh, Thursday, okay, tomorrow is obviously Friday. Um, it's very, very easy to start sipping your own Kool-Aid, okay? Believing that you are Teflon, nothing can hurt you, the market is going to continue. Always remember, history always repeats itself. This is the way my mindset was in 2000. Nothing is ever going to change. The internet craze is going to be phenomenal. We talked about this yesterday uh, on the video. Again, it could, you know, it could end at any time, okay? The only difference now... Uh, between where I am now, where I was 20 years ago, I actually know this is real, okay? And the moral of the story is, I, I said today, uh, at some point in the day, uh, at some point in the morning, I said, look guys, this is where FOMO is at historical levels, okay? Keep giving them stock, keep booking your profits. 
the market is just not going to turn around and, and tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, look, we're going to pull the plug. And if you saw what happened in the middle of the day, ridiculous rug pulls, right? Tesla went down like 100. Uh, Amazon got murdered. I mean, these are some murder candles, right? Like really, really aggressive candles. Even uh, the stocks that were crazy strong today, like beyond, right? Crazy move up and then crazy move down. So we saw an aggressive rug pull. And, and again, if you believe that it's not going to affect you, trust me, it's going to affect you. Again, with experience, you kind of start getting a defense mechanism. And the most, the more of the story is I stopped guessing where the market was and I kind of reiterate this point over and over again because I'd like it to get into the subconscious of especially the new traders but we're not trying to guess what happens next week. I don't know how Tesla's gonna react off the split. I don't know how Apple's gonna you know, react off this. We don't know, okay? We don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, okay? So the plan for the day is literally planning for the day. And you know, this is where kind of the discipline comes in. And when you have a very, very aggressive week, you could continue to trade the same speed. And you guys have been, uh, for all you guys who've been, who've been uh, watching this broadcast, for a very long time, I kind of talk about shifting gears. And when I looked at charts tonight, you know, I like a few things, right? I don't love anything. Um, I think we've gotten served four days of aggressive face cards. You know, the, the, the jacks, the queens, the kings, the aces. You know, maybe we can get a, a, a you know, a 9-10 offsuit tomorrow, right? I, I don't love anything. And that's where your discipline comes in. This is where you put on your big boy, big girl pants, okay? This is where you put your responsibility hat on, and this is where you have to, again, learn how to shift gears. And the, the traders who learn how to shift gears earlier on in their development, they're the ones gonna be more poised. They're gonna be the ones that are more patient, the more responsible, and their careers, more chances than not, gonna be more extended than the person who says, ah, this is a bull market, just buy every single dip. Again, remember, the dip got bought today because it's a good market, okay? The dip is only good when it works. Remember, Wall Street is the only business in the world, and I've said this for years, when things are on sale, people don't wanna buy. So remember, buy the dip only works when the dip works. And when the market goes from linear to buyer strike to distribution, and it doesn't look any different to you because you're a new trader and you've seen this, they are going to pull the rug. They, they are, just trust me. All you need to do is look at any single market uh, for the last 25 years. Even the most aggressive bull market that we've seen, we've watched this broadcast, you heard me talk about uh, blow off tops, inverted, hand, uh, inverted hammers. There's very, very aggression to the downside as well. Again, nobody's calling for anything crazy tomorrow. Hell, I don't even know if we're gonna be down tomorrow, but it's just something that I just don't love for tomorrow. You know, are there some ideas that I like for tomorrow. I mean, yeah, you know, Starbucks looks okay, right? Starbucks looks looks okay. It held up fairly well. Uh, CRM after yesterday's really really aggressive day, you know, is setting up maybe for another run. You know, it looks okay. I, again, it looks okay. There, there's no trades out there that I'm looking and I go, wow, this looks looks awesome. Look at Roku, three weeks of distribution. This looks amazing. There's nothing out there like that, right? There's just a bunch of trades. Uh, that look okay, uh, you know, look at like jazz. And again, if you put it this way, if you know the way I operate and I'm talking about jazz, right? And I'm talking about, for example, um, you know, Starbucks, even though Starbucks, I will trade. But again, it's not something that I go, wow, this looks so good. So tomorrow, again, trade with caution, okay? Will there be something that pops up, some sort of TikTok news, some sort of this news, some sort of that news? Of course, we always get something, but going into tomorrow, and, 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 and last week, you know, and Monday, I said I have no expectations, I lit, and I was trying to Belichick the market, I literally have no expectations for tomorrow. Again, you don't need to trade. Remember, we trade because there's value, not because the market's open, and again, there will be some value, there are some names that I like, but am I going into tomorrow and saying, wow, I can't wait for Friday? I wouldn't say that on a normal day, let alone I'm getting less value and I'm holding on to basically an eight, nine offsuit. So uh, today's session, uh, very aggressive. Okay, once again, uh, very aggressive. Um, it played out like we talked about yesterday. Um, the only thing that screwed us, okay, now let me show you the pivots. The only thing that screwed us this morning, the play this morning was, Literally anything that opened red, right? The stocks that were very, very big moves yesterday. Amazon, Netflix, CRM, like everything, all those names, right? 
So everything was down pre-market, and then Powell started speaking, and around 8.30, everything went green. And I was like, oh, God, I just completely messed up the trade. Like, Amazon went up, like, 15, 17 points. Like, everything messed up the trade. I was like, wow, this really sucks. Well, let's go to plan B. And then next thing you know, plan B, we start looking up, and you go, oh, Square got upgraded. Okay, we know the ram We know what happens in this type of market when a stock gets upgraded. We started watching, and I go, oh, BYND, there's a PR. Remember, we've been talking about that 130 level on BYND for a very, very long time. Again, was this the biggest news in the world? No, but again, in this market, it's a shoot first, ask questions later market. Nobody cares about the actual PR anymore. When a technical level gets confirmed, usually good things are gonna happen. So a lot of my you know, game plan for this morning got really, really compromised. But again, when you look at the pivots that actually triggered and then confirmed, they did incredibly well. Again, and that's the, the point of this type of market. If you miss your window on something, more chances than not, something else will come. The only question is, are you going to be responsible? And that's kind of like the point of tonight's session, right? Responsibility for tomorrow, shifting gears, tier, you know, taking down tier size, maybe trade a little bit less, right? Trade a little bit less size, okay? Are you going to be responsible enough to say, okay, look, half my game plan got torched into flames. Let me chase second and third tier plays or let me wait. Again, the professional adult trader, and again, adult doesn't mean you're 55 years old. Adult could be you're 21 years old, but you have uh, the foresight to understand what's going to happen if you trade irresponsibly. And today uh, turned out to be incredibly good. I mean, incredibly, incredibly good. Uh, let's talk about this. Uh, I was watching from the video. I thought this was one of the names uh, that could have woke up today, and it didn't. Okay, uh, I like that 515, 516, 50 area. Never got close. Remember we were talking about Disney last night? Disney looked incredible. The 135 call buyers came in yesterday. The 140 call buyers came in today. And Disney exploded. I mean, I mean, for, for Disney to move like it did was pretty damn good. It, it went from 133, uh, went all the way to 136 and change. Everything got pulled. But again, really great mover on Disney. Man, I've been watching this NET 4050 level. Still not there, but I'm watching it. I'm still watching it. It's almost like a scenario of Roku. Eventually, it will build over this 4050 level. But again, here's me still watching. Uh, Chewy never got to the 4950 area. Uh, here is a perfect trade. I, I caught you know Square. Uh, I caught some Square. The only thing I, I'm, I'm really a little bit irked about on Square. It didn't give the potential trade what the Roku did the other day or some of the other names that got upgraded. So uh, here was Square, uh, that 5950 area we talked about, right, got upgraded and it, it, it went to right to the Bollinger Band or maybe a little less below the Bollinger Band to 6150. You know, put up, you know, put up a move and I sat there and I go, well, maybe next candle it confirms it goes higher. So I took the scalp on Square and then it just kind of died on a vine. I can't explain to you why, but it, got, it died on a vine. Maybe it was just kind of like, you know, took its cue from all the other betas that reversed, maybe. But when you get a, you know, when you get a Goldman Sachs upgrade and you're in this type of environment, you're kind of expecting a little bit more. So a little bit disappointing, but again, as I say all the time, let your worst trade uh, be a profitable one. 510 on Apple needs to build, could run ahead of earnings. Again, didn't get the 510, okay? Just didn't get the 510. Um, which sucks, but it didn't get the 510. Uh, CRM on watch red to green. The problem is it went right to green after I logged off to 230 and it actually ran up about $6. I still like it for tomorrow. I don't love it, but I like it. Um, I like it. You know, I like it, especially if it, on a rising dip, maybe it goes red to green and confirms today's price action. Okay, we'll see. Uh, Amazon, again, kind of messed this up. Uh, on watch, red to green pre market. It ran up above this level, literally, it's up like 17 points pre market. Uh, I couldn't get a piece of that. Uh, Netflix, again, same thing, never went green. Uh, Facebook on watch, never got there. Uh, this was definitely an awesome move. Um, BYND, I, I got long at the 130. I, I knew that 130 was a big spot because when you get a catalyst, okay, when you get a catalyst and it confirms 
uh, a daily supply. It's usually a good thing is going to happen. I thought it was going to get to 34, okay? Uh, damn thing went to almost 39. So here's the 130. It was actually 129, 60s, but I always buy the whole number. So here's the 130. It exploded past the 134 and went to 138. Uh, awesome. I mean, I was happy with the trade. I was definitely happy with the trade. Uh, again, here's another scenario just like Square. Peloton got upgraded. I think it was by Goldman Sachs. Uh, oh, excuse me. Square got upgraded by Mizuho. Mizuno, Mizuho, whatever the hell it's called. Peloton got upgraded by Goldman Sachs and $96 price target, never confirmed. Very, very odd. Uh, very, very odd indeed. So excellent move on BYND. Uh, nice move on uh, Disney. FSLY, I caught really, really well. Um, 93, 75, 94 needs to build. Again, we've been talking about FSLY for a couple of days. Yesterday, we talked about on the video how they were coming for the 100 $105 calls today. They were coming for the 100, 101, 125s at, at some point. Uh, so I got long above this area here, this 94, and just absolutely exploded. It just missed the 100 bucks, but really, really good looking chart. Again, something we have to watch uh, again for the next uh, the next couple of days. Uh, just a big move there. You know, and again, I go here is you know here 100 weekly call buyer comes in and traded right to 100. Now here is the most oddest trade of the day. I didn't even know Oracle. I had no idea or Oracle even, even existed. Okay, the last time I traded Oracle was like 2000. I go, what year is it? But the idea of, you know, of this market right now, it gives you themes. So Microsoft came out with um, news you know, this morning that you know, they were gonna possibly put in a bid for TikTok. It exploded. Next thing I hear, hey, Oracle is about to uh, put in a bid for TikTok, 20 billion. Okay, let's buy Oracle. Again, what year is it? What am I buying, Juniper, Corning? Nortel Networks, JDSU, where are we, right? So I bought Oracle. So I got long Oracle. I uh, actually bought a red to green, but it needed a 560 confirmation. So I put it in the Twitter feed. So we got long in the 5750 break. And my last sale, I think it was like 58, uh, 20, 15, something like that. Uh, so really good move. Again, I was shocked. Uh, I kept the run. I got bro broken even on the balance, but hey, beautiful trade. Uh, Oracle, of all things, Oracle, uh, 100 on deck on FSLY. Again, the action is just amazing. Just an absolute amazing action. Um, 347, 3, 3447 needs to build. They got the 346, never even came close uh, for confirmation, and everything sold off as well. So, um, very aggressive, solid week. Uh, I'm very pleased with the action. I think tomorrow we have to kind of scale back. I do. Uh, I'm, I, unless I'm going to be very pleasantly surprised. Uh, and something wakes up that you know we have alerts set for or is some option flow or something, but we have to do our very, very best to understand that this is the long game, okay? We're not playing for the day. We're playing for our career. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Have an awesome Friday. Have an amazing weekend, and let's live, right? Let's live. Have a great night, guys. Take care.